Rona McDaniel joins NBC after pressure campaign from Trump to resign from the RNC. Rob, do you have the uh, video of him, her saying that I was asked to leave the RNC? See if you have the video. If you don't have it, it's not hard to find. It's on Twitter. So former RNC chairwoman Ronna McDaniel joins NBC News as an on-air contributor with her de- debut schedule for Meet the Press this Sunday, making her first interview since stepping down from the RNC, uh, as reported by The Hollywood Reporter. OK, anyway, she's there to give insider perspective. And while this is going on, they were not too happy about it. OK, MSNBC doesn't plan to put ex-RNC chair Ronald McDaniel on the network. So now they're going back and forth because that's a story the day, next, the, uh, day later. And then, by the way, I think that's the one right there that you had. I think that's the one right there. Can you zoom in to see what the day is? March, the, uh, zoom in and see, that's exactly the one. Can, and let me say, for example, why not speak out earlier? Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's the one. Can you play that clip real quick? So that's her on Meet the Press, I think a couple days ago. Right, well, let's talk about the election now. Donald Trump says one of his first acts, if he is reelected to a second term, would be, quote, to free those charged and convicted of crimes related to January 6th. Do you support that? I want to be very clear. The violence that happened on January 6th is unacceptable. Here we go. It doesn't represent our country. It certainly does not represent my party. We should not be attacking the Capitol. We should not be having violence. I said it that day. I put a statement out that day that this is not acceptable. If you attacked our Capitol and you have been if you and you've been convicted, then that should stay. So then, but to the question, though, do you disagree with Trump saying he's going to free those who've been charged? I do convicted? not think people who committed violent acts on January 6th should be freed. So you disagree with wow. that? He's been saying that for months. I, Rana, why not speak out earlier? Why just speak out about that now? When you're the RNC chair, you, you kind of take one for the whole team, right? Now mm-hmm. I get to be a little bit more myself, right? This is what I believe. <laughs> I don't think violence should be in our political discourse, Republican or Democrat. And I disagree with that. I agree with him on a whole host of other things. Let's close the border. Let's make sure we have good incomes for people. Let's make sure we do a lot of great things. But on that point, I don't think we should be freeing people who violently attacked Capitol Hill police officers and, and, and attack the Capitol. And, and by the way, do you have the clip, Rob, of her saying, you know, that Biden wanted fair and square, you know, because there's another clip with her. This this interview continues and, with her saying a bunch of different things. And then Chuck Todd loses his mind. Yeah. Like, and then can, we'll go to that yeah, one. His so brain wa- almost comes watch up. this one here, folks. Watch this one here. Stop you because you did say you just said Joe Biden's a legitimately elected president. This is the first time you have said this. It's not. not. I have said, said it many well, times. This is, this is what you said a, a year ago. To Chris Wallace, I want sure. to play you what you said. Are you yeah. saying as the chair of the Republican Party that you still have questions as to whether or not Joe Biden was no, the I, duly elected president? Joe Biden's the president. No, I didn't the ask you whether he's the president. No, I don't think that I think Do you there think were lots he won, of problems. He won the election. I think there were lots of problems with 2020. Do you he's think he ultimately won the ele- he won the election. Pardon? But ultimately he won the election, but there were lots of problems with the 2020 election. A hundred percent. And that's fair. But yeah. I don't think he won it fair. I don't. I I'm not gonna say that. So mm. you didn't say yep. he won- Weird. Mm-hmm. He didn't want Wait, guys, I can't did hear. Just Joe go back. Biden I want to see what you're saying. Fa- go back. A li- there you go. Won it fair at that point. Can you say as you sit here today, did Joe Biden win the election fair and square? He won. He's the legitimate did he win president. Fair and, square? fair and square he won. It's certified. Oh, you it's done. So, uh, so you know, I, I when you do either. that, when you do that, when you do that, here's what happens when you do something like that. Uh, you know how much it costs for her to say that? You know what her salary is? With NBC, can you pull up what her salary is? Well, she just signed, like she actually signed. What the they're deal. offering her. I mean, obviously, the number is give or take. For three hundred thousand dollars, Ronna McDaniel will flip for you wow. and change your opinion. That's wow. all she's being paid. That's all she's being paid for three hundred thousand wow. dollars. What a what. A, you know what she needs to watch? She mm-hmm. needs to watch the movie Ascent of a Woman, mm-hmm. and she needs to go watch the speech all the way at the end. Okay, and and hear. What Colonel, what's his name? Colonel uh, Frank Slave. Frank Frank Slave. What what he says at the end and see what the other kids or the son of the other guy, what he was, uh, you know, you could buy him off and all this stuff in the school. You can buy him up, but you couldn't buy out. Yeah. But not a bared man. Yeah. When he goes, yeah, he goes, but Charlie wasn't selling. But Charlie Charlie wasn't wasn't selling. He he was offered him. And George sitting in Big Daddy's pocket. That's right. But guess who was selling? 
Rona McDaniel, McDaniel. was Whoa. for sale, one hundred thousand dollars. And you're you're saying it with a straight look on your face that there wasn't. So so let me ask you this question: That whole story of New York Post that was going viral with Hunter Biden, that Twitter files came up and revealed based on what Taibbi and Barry Weiss wrote with Elon Musk and releasing all of that stuff and saying that, yeah, they were in communication with the FBI and everybody. Don't release that. You don't think that would have flipped the vote? You know how many people said they would have voted in a different way? You don't think? Now, she may, if you want to categorize and isolate each issue and say, look, was there voter mail-in drop, all that stuff? Okay, yes. maybe isolate that. Okay, you can say yes or no. Maybe you can sit them, but to say there was none with Twitter after the files mm-hmm. came out and after 50 intelligence agents yeah. agents coming out and saying there is 100 percent nothing going on with that laptop and they fooled America into voting for that guy. You can sit there with a straight look on your face and say, no, you lost credibility. And by the way, just so you know, Ronna McDaniel, just so you know this. So not only did you lose, uh, you had some, but now you lost credibility with the party that you were the chairwoman for, but guess what they're thinking about you at NBC? That you'll flip again if Fox gives you $500,000, you go throw NBC under the bus. <laughs> Your first sale is what it is. Can you play how Chuck Todd reacts to this, Rob? If you don't mind, go, go play the Chuck Todd clip and see how, what his reaction was for this. Play this clip here, watch this, folks. Dive right in, what were your takeaways? Look, let me deal with the elephant in the room. Yeah. I think our bosses owe you an apology. Wow. For putting you in this situation. Because I don't know what to believe. She is now a paid contributor by NBC News. I have no idea whether any answer she gave to you was because she didn't want to mess up her contract. Mm. Um, She wants us to believe that she was speaking for the RNC when the RNC was paying for her. So she has she has credibility issues that she still has to deal with. Is she speaking for herself or is she speaking on behalf of who's paying her? Once at the RNC, she did say that, hey, I'm speaking for the party. I get that. That's part of the job. So what about here? I I will say this. I think your interview uh, did a good job of exposing, I think, many of the contradictions. And look, there's a reason why there's a lot of journalists at NBC News uncomfortable with this, because many of our professional dealings with the RNC over the last six years have been met with gaslighting, Mm. have been met with character assassination. So it is... It, you know, we can pause that's yeah, where, bro. I mean, you you just yeah. cross the line with character assassination, bro. You guys are like, he's the, talking shit. Yeah, by the way, he'll like, yeah. what a, what but, a but, chill. But by the way, but yeah. he makes a good point. No, he does make a yeah. good point, like, not to trust yeah. her. Oh, yeah, yeah, 100%. Because, well, first of all, yeah, but Ronald McDaniel, this just goes to show you, like, what Trump has had to and go to deal with. This is the head of the RNC. This is her character. By the way, this doesn't happen overnight. That's the type of person that she's always been, Patrick. Like she's, he has to deal with these people. That's why when when people go, oh well, Trump assigned uh, Christopher Ray and FBI. I'm like, bro, he has no freaking choice. This is the setup. By the way, established. You know what Vivek's marketing team needs to do? Vivek's marketing team needs to cut the clip from the part where he says, "Come on up here and apologize to the entire Republican Party, yeah. to Ronald McDaniel. I'll give you my time." And then they need to cut small clips of that 15 seconds of what she just said about insurrection, about what she just said, about the election, about what she just said, that there was a, everything needs to be cut and then goes back with that laughing, ah, uh-huh. laughing the fact that he was right. Because all of this validates that this guy, when he had this moment, can you play this clip, Rob? The brass he had when he did this. Go ahead and play this clip. We were there for this one. Yeah, of course. President. I think there's something deeper going on in the Republican Party here, and I am upset about what happened last night. We've become a party of losers at the end of the day. We have a cancer in the Republican establishment. Let's speak the truth. I mean, since Ronna McDaniel took over as chairwoman of the RNC in 2017, we have lost 2018, 2020, 2022, no red wave that never came. We got trounced last night in 2023. And I think that we have to have accountability in our party. For that matter, Ron, if you want to come on stage Thank tonight, God. you want to look the GOP it. voters in the eye and tell them you resign, I will turn over my yield my time to you. And frankly, look, the people there are cheering for losing in the Republican Party. Think about who's moderating this debate. This should be Tucker Carlson, Joe Rogan, and Elon Musk. We'd have 10 times mm. the viewership asking questions that GOP primary voters actually care about and bringing more people into our party. Do you think the Democrats... I mean, That's us clapping in the back. Do you think the Democrats I started that would actually hire Greg Gutfeld to host a Democratic debate? They wouldn't do it. 
And so the fact of the matter is, I mean, Chris, I'm going to use this time because this is actually well, about you and the media out. and the corrupt media establishment. Ask you the Trump Russia collusion hoax that you pushed on this network for years. Was that real or was that Hillary Clinton Go. made Watch up this smile. information? Watch smile. Answer the question. Go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Are they on show yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, she's yeah. frozen. So, 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 so yeah. the reason the reason why this is important is because more of these things that happen right now. You know how the college football season ends and a team loses the BCS Championship Bowl or whatever it is, or NBA Championship, somebody loses or MLB, but the team that loses has number one highest odds of winning the following year. Yeah, right. For many different reasons. Right now, Vivek has to be at the top of the list for 2028, okay? There are so many ways to sell Vivek's story for 2028. So many things he did that if there was not a Trump in 2024, he would have had all of those Trump MAGA voters been on his side, okay? If there was no Trump. Now, obviously, there's a person that's in his way, which is who? The man that, you know, created this America first concept and uh, MAGA and all this stuff that's given, uh, inspired Vivek to become without a Trump. Maybe there's not a Vivek being inspired, Mm -hmm. but all I'm saying is 2028, he's the number one draft pick right now for presidential candidate for 2028. And he's validating every time Ronna McDaniel does what she does with NBC, this just validates all those points that he made. Tom. So there's two things going on here. The first thing is let's Let's step away from the fog for a minute and look at it. Vivek was right. Ronna McDaniel did a bad job leading the party. You're supposed to lead on strategy, pulling people together. You're supposed to lead on fundraising, pulling people together. And you're supposed to win when there's an opportunity to win. She was not up against Obama. She was not up against Bill Clinton. She lost. And so she did a bad job at her job. And guess what? Accountability she should be fired, resign, leave, you know, CEO gets package, whatever it is, she should leave. Part one. Part two, in politics, you always walk down the street to New York and you do one of two things. You go to a publisher and you get a book deal or you go and you become a pundit. Look at the look at um, Saki. She got her show. Mm-hmm. All these people. There's a, there is a there's a path. You don't have to go hacking through the jungle. There's a well worn path to go to New York and get your book deal or get on on media. And now she goes on media and NBC. Now let's think about it. Why did the bosses at NBC put her on the media? Because that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to see if they can bring voters. So they're like, hey, you know, she's conservative way over here on the left. Backstory. Ad rates down, viewership down, NBC News, MSNBC News, ratings suck, S-U-C-K suck. So the bosses are trying to do something, next innovative campaign, to see if maybe they could bring somebody on that'll bring some lightning, bring some viewership. Instead, they had what's called organ rejection. Pat can tell you, if you hire the wrong person into the wrong culture, into your organization, you're, it's mm-hmm. catastrophic. And your organization, despite what you say, I'm hiring this new uh, VP of sales, and he's coming in here, she's coming in here, we're going to take him. If the organization is the wrong culture, it's like organ rejection. They are going to reject, and that person will soon be gone. And that's what's happened here, because NBC is the journalist, and I can't believe Chuck Todd uses that word. He should go look it up through the dictionary used by Walter Cronkite. He's wrong. Wrong. You are shills. You are talking heads. You are telegenic people with a producer in your ear, Chuck. Let's talk about what it really is. And they're out there. It's organ rejection. They're like, hey, oh, my gosh, one of the enemy is here. Now, they're bringing up good points. She is for sale, flipping back and forth. Mm-hmm. But the NBC bosses went to do what they always do. Bring somebody in who's available. Can you bring viewers? Can you do something from the other side? But she did a bad job. She was fired. And here's, she's for sale. I mean, that that's what this. Yeah, but they, but, but, she, but they, they've been losing. Vivek uh, nailed it. She, they've been losing since she. When, when did she become chair of the RNC? How long has she been in there? 2018. So I think about 16? it. Losing, losing. 2020, yeah. losing. 20, like, bro, it's almost as if they pl- they put her ass in there on purpose because this is her character. And then she no. flips now. No. What do you mean? No, they didn't put her there on purpose. Here's what's going on. You think there's loyalty in any like you? So because Adam, you believe in this party. I don't believe in. I believe in the Una party, and they're all on the same okay. team. When it's wrestling. Th- I don't. Be- I'm not one of those red wave, blue wave. They are all on the same team. They all make us the illusion of, mm-hmm. oh my God, they're fighting for us. It's all bullshit. She's she's exactly what the swamp is. It's Rama McDaniel, one thousand percent. Here's so what's going they on. Put her in here, which they? Uh, the the Democrat, the other side. What I'm saying is, I think the Democrats. Not, well, 
for and again, Ronald McDaniel as the chair of the RNC? No, no, I'm just saying. It's literally she, the exact opposite of that. W- hold on a second, Adam. Since she's been in, what has happened yeah. to the RNC, the Republican National Committee? Well, I'll tell you They're what They're losers. They lose. So Vinny, the, yeah. can I tell Let's you what's hear going what Adam's on? Yeah. Go ahead, Adam. Here's what's going on with Ronald McDaniel. The reality today is she is politically homeless. What do I mean? So I actually watched, I watched Meet the Press every Sunday. I've watched it forever with Chuck Todd. And now Kristen Welker is actually doing a pretty good job. She has left, right. She, she's pretty. More left, more left than right. No, she has tons I mean, of people on. Have you ever watched the show? No. Really not, Adam. No. Did she push okay. all that bullshit agenda during COVID and everything? She's, she, yeah. she's not credible at all. I'm talking about since she started the show, Meet the Press, a few months ago, it's actually she's done a good job. Okay. Here's the reality of what's going on here when I say she's politically homeless. Kristen Welker pushed her. She said, she played the Trump quote, played the Vivek quote about losing. Her response was, because you can't def- defend losing 2018, 2020, 2022, and potentially 2024. You can't defend that. So what did she do? She gave the DEI inclusion narrative. Well, since I've been chairman, uh, chairwoman of the RNC, um, despite losing all those elections, we've elected w- more women, more people of color, and she kind of went down that route. Well, reality is they're not winning. But why do I say she's politically homeless? It's because the GOP as we know it, the RNC as we know it, no longer exists. It is the MAGA party, and we know this. Who's the new chairwoman of the RNC? Laura Trump. A little nepotizy. So Thank God. Okay, but that's good. my point. Good for him. Okay. So what we the reality is, whether Trump wins, whether Trump loses, we shall see. Nobody has any clue what the future of the RNC or the GOP will be after Trump. Vivek, maybe we shall see. But we all know Ronald McDaniel's maiden name, and it is Romney. Yeah. She's as establishment M- M- as it gets. Yeah. The reality is, is in the RNC, whether you're Romney, whether you're Cheney, whether you're Pence, you don't exist anymore in the party. We, we played the clip of Vivek at the uh, debate in Miami. Well, Tom and I were there at the debate in California with PBD as well. It was completely the opposite. Shit show. Yeah. Tom, absolute shit show. California, Arguing crazy. California was yes. low shit energy, show. poorly nuts. assembled. Bad. So it was such a shit show. We could literally walk on stage and say hi to the candidates. We did. You slapped did. Pence in his ass. I went up to Mike Pence and I was like, hey, great job, VP Pence. I think you're going to win this thing. You got this. After and I did we a, stepped I did on a, the edge yes, of the stage. I did a video. He's like, thank you. Thank you. He's like, Ronald McDaniel, how are you? I turn around and put the camera around. What's your point? What's your point? I'm like, this guy's got no chance. The point that I'm getting at is the establishment is gone from the Republican Party. So she has no future. If she tries to go right to the MAGA route, yeah. they don't want her. If she tries to go left to the Democrat liberal route, they don't want her. We talked about Chuck Todd, who, by the way, used to host Meet the Press yeah. for a decade. Joe Scarborough, who has the biggest show on MSNBC, Douche. Mika Brzezinski, Douche. he's like, I would never have her on my show condemning the hell out of this. Well, who was her father, Adam? Who'd you say? Mama, Mama, yeah. her, McDonald, uh, Rom, she's, a Ro- she's a Romney. Mitt Romney. And where's not, not her father. Wh- huh? where, where, family member. Where's his, where does that guy stand? That's her family, though, right? Where does right. he stand? He's anti-Trump. He's 100% establishment. So what I'm saying is she's the perfect person to put into the RNC to make the RNC lose yeah, every single b- b- time. By the way, by the way, it, it, you know who falls in that category? Kinzinger. Mm-hmm. You know, you got Walsh. What's his name? Joe Walsh. We had him on. Yes. And yep. it was actually, you know, super entertaining. You're a Democrat. You're a Democrat. He's, he's yeah. part of a... Hey, part get of out of here right campaign. now. There's quite a few people that are part of that yeah. group that can't handle working with a guy like Trump. They just can't handle yeah. working. So immediately they go to the other side as if finding a way to get under, you know, the anti-establishment community skin. But what you do is you're permanently, your credit Mm -hmm. score, imagine your credit score goes from 820 overnight to 450 with that community. It's done. You're finished. It's done. And it's not 450 for you and you recover and fix your credit in three years. Your credit score stays 450 for the rest of your life in politics. That's exactly what happened. But here's and it's it's sorry. not. And by the way, you're making a very good point that she doesn't have a party today yes. and all this other stuff. 
But if anybody was on the inside that could give her feedback on strategy, this would probably be the worst move she could make. But there's there's one thing um, that could be a slippery slope downside. Because if you're part of the Republican Party, now known as the MAGA Party, unfortunately, if you don't fully embrace that the election was stolen and you don't fully embrace that January 6th was just a peaceful protest, you're no longer part of the party. So there needs to be a home and a big tent within the Republican Party that says, yes, we might differ on some of these things. You know, she had to basically bend the knee and say that Joe Biden is the president. By the way, breaking news, guys, he is. But I think it's a little scary and dicey that the Republican Party will now castrate or kick out anybody that doesn't you know, fully you know, embrace Adam, that's election dialogue. That's hard to do. And, and I will tell you why it's hard to do. Mm -hmm. This has got nothing to do with MAGA, anti-MAGA, anything like that. This has got to do with, do you know how to read the Twitter files showing that a story, the U.S. government contacted Twitter to say, take the story from New York Post down, the oldest paper in America, take it down, it's not true, and 50 intelligence agents signed to say this is all a fraud three years later we find out it is and hunter biden says i want to do this public because i want the world to see that you guys are full of shit and then he has the court last week guess what seat is the only one missing hunter. with his name tag <laughs> sitting there his you have a very hard time convincing that community to say no that didn't affect the flipping election after 67 percent whatever the number was that came out saying i would have voted differently if i knew that story was right and the intelligence officers wouldn't have come out and said there was nothing there yeah it's kind of hard for people that are able to reason and think for themselves and research for themselves you're fully right i'm giving you zero pushback by the way when did elon musk and the twitter files come out give me the date on that three years so october 22 okay so the point that I'm getting at is you're absolutely right. Zero pushback Twitter files. There's something shady October going on with the New York Post. Yeah. However, <clears throat> that has nothing to do with the actual No, there's ballots. nothing shady hold on, with the hold Post. On. Thomas. The Post Thomas. published an article and Th they were told to Holy spike it. Well, yeah. Th yeah, well, can I finish I wanna, my I point finish, I have to say before the old man yells at the sky? Oh, this has, really? Finish this your has, point. You, well, here we go again. It's been 20 minutes to get to a point. Can, I'm waiting can, with thirsty ears, can dude. We, can we put Tom to bed soon, guys? This has nothing to do with what actually happened in the election in Georgia, in Pennsylvania, in Wisconsin, in Michigan. If any, any, any of those court cases held any water and won any one, any of those cases, this would be an entirely different conversation. Fully agree with the Twitter thing, yeah. but you well, lost every single but, court but case. You, but you can't say that because no, that, hold on, because what he said he didn't, is actual, no, he didn't no, lose no, every no, court no, case. You're not, you're not let, Adam, let me finish. Oh, I'm what he said, Adam, I'm imitating let, Adam, Tom right now. Adam, that's fine. I'm imitating but Tom. But listen, what he's saying oh, is yeah, that yeah, is cheating. Hold on, hold on. What he's saying with the agencies, with 81 FBI agents working, having an office at Twitter is cheating. Stopping stories is cheating. And for I you, said that I, I agreed with no, that. No, no, hold on. But, so tell me about the okay, court right, cases. Ready for this for Court, Tell me about the court if, cases. If anything, well, they didn't win one. You, if you think I'm going to, hold on. If you think I'm going to trust yeah. the courts, look what the hell's happening in New York with that piece of shit and, and Letitia James. I don't trust any court. If they could do that shit to him right now, when people go, well, in the courts they won. They bought and sold the courts a long time ago. I don't trust but, anything about the judicial What do you mean the courts? Every court in America? I you don't trust anything? I, hold on, hold on. If they, Zero? I don't trust Even in Georgia? Anybody, guess what? With the Republican governor? I don't trust the judicial system. By, by the way, period. By the way, by the way let, period. Let, if we take, again, Adam, if we take it based on what you're saying, yes. which is the argument to be made, okay, yeah. So they need to prove that point. But the argument, it stops at Twitter with Twitter files. That's where the argument, we don't even need to go to the next step because that one story, when Chris, uh, uh, what's his name? Comey, uh, Comey, is that his name? Chris, uh, uh, what was the director? Comey. Jim Comey? Jim uh, Comey. Jim, what was Jim it? Comey got fired. James uh, Comey. James Comey. Yeah. When James Comey came out and he said what he said about Hillary Clinton's emails. Wow, shocking. A couple too. weeks before that. that the, uh, yes. Lost through the election. Okay, so yes. you want to. Sorry, sir. Yeah. Lost through the election, right? Yes. Okay. When did New York Post share the story about Hunter Biden's laptop? 
pretty much around the same time as when You're right. it happened with Comey. But the difference was yes. they asked Twitter to take it down. Did what Comey did with Hillary Clinton's email affect the election? You could argue yes, for sure. I would argue for sure yes. yes. If Comey doesn't do that, does Hillary Clinton win? I would say the percentages would increase significantly. We're on the same page. Cool. If the New York, forget about all the other counties that you're talking about. Yeah. If New York Post story isn't taken down, and if those lying intelligence officers that came out saying there's nothing in that laptop, would that have changed the election for 2020? It would have increased Trump's odds for sure. Same as Hillary Clinton, same as uh, uh, Trump's, right? So even Stephen is what you're saying. No, what I'm saying is what Comey did yes. impacted the... I was shocked that he did it, Me to be too. honest with you. I was shocked that... Because he, he could have done that November 6th, right? He could have done that November 10th. But he did that. And by the way, till today, I guarantee you, deep down in turn, uh, inside, Hillary Clinton is furious with the fact that he did what he did. Oh, he should watch his back. Oh, he's on the hit list for <laughs> sure. <laughs> but but uh, all I'm saying is the same exact way yes. that what Comey did in mid-October hurt Hillary Clinton's chances is the same exact way that the government getting a hold of that article by New York Post affected the election. To me, I don't need to go through the next steps. I'm just well, simply going to stay there and see the fact that there was influence there. By the way, that's the one. That's the yes. Comey one, October 28th. Can you see when the uh, story was for New York Post, Hunter Biden, 2020 election? What, what day was okay. that? Except that's October 28th. I'm actually curious to know what exactly that day was. Well, you know how you say, you know, it's like a NBA playoffs. It's 3-2 and yes. all that. So ultimately, with interference, it's 1-1. One, one. Comey affected the outcome. No, for no, 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 wait, wait, now, now you got to be careful what you're doing here because, because one was doing his job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Comey did his job. Exposing the truth. And actually said what happened. Love him or hate him. Guess what? Uh, even the folks who voted for Trump. If Comey doesn't do that, Hillary Clinton would have been your president. So as much as you guys give Comey hate, if he would have waited 10 days, mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton would have been a two-term president. Just so you know that. Very high likely that happens. Right. So he did his job. But on the other side, that's called fraud. Cheating. That's called election interference for the U.S. government agencies to contact Twitter in an email saying, take the story down. And then 50 intelligence officers signing their name permanently. Those guys, as a last name, is in disgrace to have a lie like that, that you affected what happened and you destroyed the country being divided the way they cheated because you played games. Comey, love him or hate him, he did his job. The other ones, manipulative, deceptive, and they caused the election to flip. That's the argument. I'm not going to the court. The court stuff, great. It is what it is. I'm going straight there. My, for me, the buck stops right there. If we know that happened and you agree that that was gamesmanship and manipulation and you've read the Twitter files, the rest of it is irrelevant to me. That's where I stand with that. But anyways, go ahead. I'll give you yeah. final thoughts no, no, before no. we move on from Again, the story. I'm with you guys on the Twitter stuff. Ugly, sloppy, disgusting. But here's what I can guarantee on November 5th. What's the, when's the last time we had a blowout election in the United States? Reagan, Blow, 49 Reagan, out of 50. Reagan okay. Carter. So what as long as we've pretty much been alive, as long as we've pretty much been alive, Tom, you were already Reagan. probably yeah. 25, 30 at that, at that time. There's only been close elections. Only. I mean, I was an intern at Tallahassee Capitol in 2000 during the closest election of our lifetime. Whatever party doesn't win big, I guarantee you this time around, Trump for sure. Like, what are the chances if Trump loses, actually loses? He says, yeah, I lost fair and square. I'm out of here, guys. Zero. So get ready for a rigged, stolen well, election. Well, with the, well with, if the polls and everything is happening right now, It'd be like, uh, how are people, the polls are in his favor. So if it happened right now and Biden has one of those overnight fucking jumps, then guess what? There's something fishy going on, Adam. This mail-in ballot, stay home bullshit COVID. Like, it's in your face. Like, they're, they're not even hiding anymore. And going back to his point, there's a difference between getting caught and then mm -hmm. actually cheating. Somebody's yeah. doing their job. Again, let me ask you one question, Vinny. Yeah. Um, let's just say uh, 49 states Reagan in this hypothetical world, um, there's actually, let's, let's just, let's just dream for a second. Okay. There's actually no cheating. No cheating. There, there's no cheating. Okay. They, it's a secure election. All the votes are counted. There's no shady stuff overnight. Nothing shady. Okay. Hypothetically. Okay. I'm going to dream right now. Go ahead. 
I'll close my eyes. And Trump actually loses. Yes. Does MAGA, you, yeah. actually say that Joe Biden won the election? If we're in a, if we're in a dream and make-believe land, yes. of course, Adam, because okay. we're dreaming. But I don't dream. I'm awake. Okay. And in reality, Adam, they have been cheating since he mentioned out of his mouth, I want to run for president. There's no more. Okay. There's no more. Hold on. There's no more Russia, this. It's out in front of your face. So And now the people are finally, you guys are finally waking up, not... The cool people, mm -hmm. the, the the dumb sheep, are finally waking up, and it's getting worse, and it's getting worse, and he's getting more uh, more popular. So if it does come down to an atom, and mm -hmm. something crazy happens where they keep us from voting, you know, what I mean, if you ever watch House of Cards, some crazy terrorist attack mm -hmm. happened to keep everybody. Then guess what it is? But if we were dreaming, Adam, yeah. I mean, you were on a cloud, and I'd be like, yeah, hundred percent. Okay, so let's just go for reality in a second. Well, now we're coming back to real life. Yeah. Would you accept a fair and free election if Joe Biden wins? Let, let me. Period. Let, let me, what, right, right now? What do you mean? Yeah, let me, if he wins. Let me, let me stop, yeah. stop, stop. We have plenty of stories to get into, and, and, and we're not doing this. Let me simplify yes, the question for you. Do you believe an ID should be required to vote? Um, I'm on the side of yes. Then, then we'll, we will never know if the election is going to be real or not. Because if out of... 16 out of 50 states in America, no vo voter ID is required. That's 220, 212 How's that legal? electoral votes. How's that legal? Okay, let me, let, me, let me just say this here because what you're asking is mm -hmm. impossible. Jeez. 16 states in America require zero ID to vote, and that's 212 electoral votes. Great point. Then non-photo ID required, meaning you can bring your an ID without your picture on it, that is 11 out of 50 states. That's 69 electoral votes. It's over with that. That's 281 out of 538. So your scenario does not exist because you and I agree that there needs to be an ID to vote. There is a monopoly if you can't even ask a logical question. I, I, on these states, 16 out of 50 states that you go to, that you don't need an mm -hmm. ID to vote. Do you think you need an ID to go to the TSA pre? Do you think you need an ID to go through TSA? Do you think you need an ID to get on a flight? Do you think you need an ID to get into a club? Do you think you need an ID to order liquor? Do you think you need an ID when you get pulled over? Do you think you need an ID? To yes, but to vote, mm -hmm. which is a million times bigger decision. No, no, no. We trust you, bro. Go ahead. No, I think to me, first we have to fix that. If right now mm -hmm. we fixed 50 out of 50 states moving forward, we're using blockchain technology with video, yeah. you go like this, yeah. and all the stuff that we already have, and you show your voter ID, matches your voice, matches everything, it goes through, it matches your eyes, then I would say, you lost, mm -hmm. and you won, we move forward. But the current system, I think what you're presenting in a perfect world, I would be willing to invest my life savings in Las Vegas to say there is zero chance there's a victory. Zero. Because there's no way in the world you would actually want an idea to be no voter ID required. You would agree to have a policy like that in a state, and you have a lot of common sense in this area. You can actually sit there and have common sense and say, yeah, it doesn't make sense that 30, what is it, 27 out of 50 states in America don't require a photo, photo ID to vote. That makes no logical sense to you. Mm -hmm. Yes right. or no? Again, I'm on the side of show your ID. Show your ID when you go to a bar. Show your ID when you go to yeah. cigarettes. Show your ID to vote. I will give you a little caveat. The states that don't require an ID, do you think they're red or blue? Red? Wrong, Vinny. They're blue. So the blue states Weird. that are already blue, that are already voting blue, they don't require an ID. So they're not flipping states. No, if Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, um, Arizona, Georgia didn't require an ID. I'd be like, hell yeah, we got a problem oh, here. What, what, what do you so think there those, is some issues. What do you think those guys do? What do you think? That's a locked up. Like for, for you have a lock up in these communities that you're, you're not yeah. needing an ID to be done. Of course you have an advantage over your competitors. You're starting day one with an advantage. There is no debate there, bro. The debate stops right there. Like if, if, you, if you want to know what logical people who work their asses off would like to see is to see that their votes are being counted accordingly based on proper verification with voter ID. 
keep the same set of standards for everything, and we're not doing that. So mm -hmm. that is where a lot of Americans sit there and question the system. Because if you really want to, you know, there's, I vote every year. I, I believe you're supposed to vote. We had certain people that say, I just don't vote and I don't. I'm going to sit this one out. I think that's also irresponsible to do so because you're setting the bad example to other kids and other people. But there's a reason there's a certain community that doesn't believe that their vote matters. It's because of this. When well, 27 out of 50 states don't require you to have a photo ID, and in those same exact states, I need an ID to drink to do all the other stuff, there is gamesmanship going on. Last question, because I know we want to move on. So if if it was that, that the case, all the states require photo ID, Trump wins, do you think Trump wins by a landslide, like the, like the Reagan thing? I, I would trust it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I would trust it if we had that. So that is the problem that I, I want to have a system that I trust. I remember at one point in, in the insurance company I was running, Tom will remember this. Tom. In the, if you've seen me frustrated behind closed doors with many different things with business, right? There is camera, there's frustration. Most of the time, our job is not to reveal whatever the frustration is. My dad once told me when, I, when him, and his, my, him and my mom would fight, he would say, never fight in front of the kids because, you know, you and I need to fight privately. Some people want to fight publicly about real issues. You can fight about silly, like stuff that we're doing right now. Nothing wrong with this. We're having conversations and debate, which is what America needs. But you have certain issues behind closed doors, stays between the two of you guys, right? What's the one thing, if you've ever seen me, be furious about, and, and Jennifer would agree with this, Moral would agree with this, Tikram would agree with this, Mario would agree with this, Alexis would agree with this, what do you think the one thing is? Uh, dishonesty and basically fraud or manipulation. Okay, so that's what people do. But I'm talking about internally where we could have controlled something that was frustrating. Oh, um, self, self-inflicted wounds. Meaning with data. Do you remember leader's bulletin back eight years ago, yep. whatever the time you, you should remember this vividly, right? It, it, because self-inflicted wound, like you, you fail to audit your own report. You put out on a report and it shoots yourself in the foot. Yeah. It's just, so meaning when I can't look at the leader's bulletin and it's not 99% accurate, what do you trust when you're voting? Hmm. You don't, right? So we, we invested $10 million in a software, so this goes away. You're never going to get 100%, but you want 99.9% .9 accuracy because you're dealing with technology, right? And the more and more and more you increase it from 95% to 98% to 99% to 99.9, .9, and then sometimes there's crashes, all this other stuff that happens. If we don't have a system and a software that you watch and you see who wins and who doesn't win, then a person doesn't trust that system. I think whoever wins office on the conservative side, if there is something that I would like to see happen policy-wise is in my top five, is create a method of voting that more people trust the voting system. We have plenty of technology and concepts in other countries being done that we can also apply here. But why are some people not interested in that? Maybe because it kind of hurts them a little bit. I would like to see that happen. And if that happens, guess what? Nobody else can cry when they lose. Nobody else can bitch if they lose. Not anybody from the left, not anybody on the right, because we trust the system. That for those of you guys that watch the podcast regularly, and maybe you have hot tea, like me, with honey, or you drink your mm -hmm. coffee to the coffee community, I'll most likely join you guys in five years, but <laughs> at this point, I still don't eat coffee. We have these new mugs. And by the way, this new mug that just came out is the PBD Podcast mug. Take we had future looks bright on it. So let me kind of show this to you, and I'll tell you what we're running on this podcast. And Kelly uh, took care of this. Let me pour this so I don't burn I'm myself. taking one. I'm, I'm acquiring uh, one of those after this. this here. So you pour the hot water in there if it's hot. Ooh, man. And guess what it turns into, by the way, while you're having this hot tea or the drink. Let me see if this thing is hot. Is it, it is hot? hot. All of a sudden, slowly... Oh! But surely, uh -huh. you see the color changes. I see it. To the PBD podcast colors. Oh, that's sick. And yes, you'll see the red and the blue of PBD podcast color coming in. I don't sick. know. Kat, you're like one of those models not. on those late night, yeah. like by the uh, QVC. QVC back in the yeah. day. Your, QVC, so, your PBD QVC. <laughs> here's what we're doing. We got the value tainment mug. You have two different op, four different options on whichever one you want to get, whether it's the gold, the black, the red, the OG, red or the black. You buy two. You get the third one for free. Pick and choose mm. which one you want. The link's going to be below. The discount code's going to be PBD Mugs, I believe. Right, Rob? PBD Mugs, plural. PBD M-U-G-S. And what's the website to go to? VTMerch.com. Find the mugs. Order two. And you'll get the third one for free. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.